marching, marching in the beauty of the day. A million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill lost gray, a torch with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses. And the people hear us singing red and roses, red and roses. What if putting myself at the center of my life experience is really not a threat to you? What if by taking very good care of my own psychological, social, physical needs, I'm a better partner to you? What if that means I'm stronger and can contribute more? That's what feminism is. It is humanism. I care very deeply about the planet. I work in mad pride issues, survivors of psychiatric abuse. I work in disability rights issues, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer issues. I work in civil rights issues. I work in poverty issues. All of these are informed by feminism. Now, what do I mean by feminism? Putting women's experience at the center of what informs my decision making and my priorities. What limitations do women have having lived in, let's face it, cultures that are predominantly patriarchal to this day? Corporations, militaries, governments, patriarchal, dominated by men, men's priorities. It's just true. Anybody who's pretending that that's not true living on a different planet than I am, or smoking something pretty funny, or just in total psychological denial of the way the world works. Why do you think there's so much stuff about queers getting married and queers in the military and yada, yada, yada? It's because weak, insecure, damaged men and women who support them actually believe that if there's gender equality, in fact, if we bust the gender binary, that somehow that's going to take something away from this little house of cards that they've built for their own egos and psychological damage. We're no threat. We're only a threat because they imagine it. Look at apartheid. Anyway, some of you that weren't even born when apartheid fell. The fear was that if White, the white minority relinquished control and domination, and it was brutal, that the black people would kill the whites, steal everything, rape and pillage. It didn't happen. Mandela set up that reconciliation commission. People were talking all over the country about nightmares that happened to them. For the most part, it was a nonviolent transition. Same with the end of slavery. It was a nonviolent transition. White people in the South got all spooked and freaked out. But black people were just freaking tired, man. They were just trying to find a little piece of ground they could scratch and grow some food and raise their kids. Black folks were just too tired. <laughs> to all the, to, it wasn't going to be what goes around comes around. We weren't going to treat them like they treated us. We weren't going to do it. There were other priorities. So when I hear these men talking about feminism as though it's taking away something from them, I think they're men that have always gotten a lot of attention, that are mama's boys, that some, some woman has always taken care of them, even the gay ones. So, then they expect that that's our role. It's codependent. It's like they're addicted to this position they have in society and they expect us to prop them up and make that possible for them. That's why they say things like, what about men's rights? Well, what about men's rights? And what are you doing about that? Complaining about me? Because I want to have on-site child care so I know my kids are okay? Because I want equal pay if I have to be in the military. Because I want to be able to walk down the street at night without worrying that the next guy that I see is going to kill me or rape me. 
yeah, we do have to worry that men are going to rape us. Now, whether you want to interpret that as every man is a rapist, every man is not a rapist. Every stranger on the street who is male is a serious and potential threat. We don't know them. We know that we live in a culture where it's hunting season on women and queers. Excuse us for being a little worried. doesn't make us paranoid. So for me, I am a humanist, and I put feminism as the center of my discourse because how can I help humanity best? To me, it looks like I need to look at women. I need to put women at the center of my thinking. If you look at the history of this continent, North America, particularly the United States, you look at the history of it by putting women at the center, this is a different country. You see things so clearly beyond the banners and the red, white, and blue and the John Philip Sousa marches. You see things so clearly because it's all women. Every race, every age, every level of ability, every level of education. You see this country differently. You see it very clearly. You see what its potential is for greatness. And you see where it has squandered and failed miserably because of the false power dichotomy. And don't tell me there's no patriarchy. The military, the governments, the corporations, the religions, all dominated by men, overwhelmingly dominated by men. If you think there's no t patriarchy, then you're living in Disneyland or Fantasyland, and why the hell are you calling yourself an atheist if you're that out of touch with what's real? There is a patriarchy. And I can cry over spilt milk and think, what would it have been like if, if pe people of other genders besides heterosexual males what if the rest of us, the queers, the women, what if we had had equal rights, equal input, equal say? You know, you look at some Native American cultures and the women who had so much power on things like war councils. If we're going to war, the women need to know about it because it's probably going to be the men who are going to be the predominant warriors and the women are going to be at home, defending the homeland, defending the children, defending the goods, defending the territory. It's a big responsibility for women. So before you guys get your panties in a twist and go off and start thumping heads, I have something to say about that. Because it's my potatoes, it's my children. It better be for a damn good reason besides your ego. Can you imagine if the American military worked like that? Woo! My being strong does not necessarily mean that you're going to be weak unless you're just already so weak and fragile and diseased and sick that you can't survive without me propping you up. And baby, I have to work for humanity. I can't sit around and hold you up. Go up here and do it for yourself. Start seeing how limited you've been by this false gender paradigm. How sickened you've been by not being able to have full access to your sensitivity, to your real genuine emotions, to your ability to nurture children, to your creativity, to your ability to control your impulses to be aggressive. Take care of yourselves. Meantime, I've got how many billion women over here on this planet with mutilated genitals? Trafficking, slavery, hauling water a dozen miles or more on their heads, being infested with AIDS, trying to take care of children when there isn't enough to eat, and Nestle is selling them tainted formula and formula that causes their breasts to dry up so that they become dependent on the formula, can't afford the formula, dilute the formula, can't refrigerate the formula, and their kids are malnourished, sick, and dying. So this is another reason I'm a feminist. It's about the children. Look, for whatever reason, let's be honest. 
the majority of people on the planet who nurture and raise children are women. Now, whether that's biological or cultural or environmental, I don't know. I know it's been enforced politically, militarily, religiously, that that's our duty and our job. I don't have any children. But my philosophy has always been, if it's not good for kids, it's not good. If it's not healthy for children, it's not healthy. And that should inform all of our decision making. Do you see corporations doing that? Do you see governments and militaries doing that? Do you see religions doing that? Hell no. Am I saying that's men's fault? I don't know all men. I know that the patriarchal institutions that are in place are ignoring it. I know those institutions are male-dominated. I'm no threat to you. You know, if I do civil rights work, disability rights work, queer rights work, <coughs> mad pride rights work, poverty rights work, that doesn't make me a threat to you. Just because you're middle class or you're not, you don't have mental health issues or you're not disabled or I'm not a threat to you because I care about my people. So I wish these mama's boys would climb off their high horses and roll up their sleeves and help. Either that or shut up and get out of the way. Because the hubris, the obstacles they raise, the fact that they dominate the conversation so totally that when you look up feminism on YouTube, you see all these men, white, able-bodied, middle-class American and UK men like they're big experts dissing us when all we're trying to do is keep ourselves our sisters our mothers and our kids alive and healthy beyond alive beyond basic survival somebody's got a lobby for the children somebody's got a lobby for women it doesn't take anything away from you. So yeah, I'm a humanist. And I focus it through feminism, through queer rights, poverty, abilities, disabilities, and mostly children. Stop beating me up. Because... I'm making a difference, and you're not, and whining about it. As we come marching, marching, we battle to for men, for they are women's children, and we'll mother them again. Our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes. Hearts bodies give us bread but give us roses marching 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 bread and roses mm. as we come marching marching our number women dead who crying through us singing they're Bread. Small art to love and beauty, their judging spirits new. Yes, it is bread we fight for, but we fight for roses too. Marching, marching, we bring the greater day. The rising of the women means the rising of the race. No more the judge and neither. Ten that all will one reposes. But a sharing of less glories. Give us bread, but give us roses.